I want to remember brother, brother Brian this morning, your pastor. I mean, we pray that the Lord will just use him mightily where he is. Certainly, we deem it a great privilege to have an assembly this great that's behind him. You know, Brother Branham says, when I'm out in the field, he says, it's your prayers that see me through. And it's the same for your pastor, brothers and sisters. You know, he, he can't do much out there if it wasn't for the support that's seated here this morning. I mean, so you can thank God for that. And maybe this morning, Brother Brian might say, I'm a little bit, of, I'm a little bit weak. But as soon as the saints prayed for him, he said, my, I don't know what happened. I was a bit... I was, a bit, I was a bit weak, but God made him strong this morning. And so you just pray for him, brothers and sisters, continually. Amen. Hallelujah. I didn't bring anyone with me this morning because we have a, a brother that's, uh, that's actually celebrating his 80th. So I said, well, I'm going to go preach and then I'm going to rush back so that I can also have some cake. So you just pray for me this morning. Amen. So we just want to turn to the to our Bibles this morning for the reading of the word of the Lord. And I trust that you've come under expectation. I want to greet your pastor's wife as well. God bless you, sister, and his family. Amen. May the Lord richly bless you. Amen. Thank you for the invitation. We certainly honor it. Amen. We've become good friends, and we just praise the Lord for that. Amen. Can we turn to Corinthians, <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 11? Just for opening scripture and the brothers can put the slide up this morning well, once we've busy, once we've finished reading our scripture. I see some familiar faces here this morning, so God bless you, those that we know, amen, may the Lord richly bless you. <clears throat> it's so nice to be relaxed when you've preached somewhere before and the people know you and you know the people, so it just gives me so much joy to be here this morning, Amen. Amen. First, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. If you have it, say amen. amen. It says, Would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me, for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. Aren't you grateful for that this morning? God is, you know, we've got human jealousy, which is one thing. But then God says, I have a godly jealousy over you. You know, it, it's something that surpasses the, the jealousy factor of men. You know, we, we, we can try and be that, but we can't because God is so good. He says, for I have espoused you to one husband that I might present you a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupt from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus whom ye have not preached. Or if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Amen. Just that far may the Lord richly bless his word. Can we just bow in a word of prayer this morning? Maybe you have a special need this morning. You can make it known to the Lord by an uplifted hand. I believe he's here. I believe he's here to give us what we need. Amen. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we deem it the privilege to be able to be with your children this morning. Lord, we thank you for the spirit, Lord, that we can feel in this building this morning, Lord. We know that you are here. We know that you are ever present, O oh Father, Lord. And as our faces differ this morning, so do our needs, Lord. But it's by that basis that we come to your house this morning. For you said, Lord, that correction starts in the house of the Lord. And we are so thankful this morning, Lord, that you... Lord, do not let your wrath upon us, O oh Father, for surely, Lord, if that happens, we will not make it. Lord, but you come through the word and you, and you speak to us, Lord, and you give us a chance to change our lives. Lord, and surely we are so grateful for that this morning, Lord. Lord, I just want to pray for the service, Lord, and also for Brother Brian, Lord, who's, who's out in Africa, Lord. Lord, seeking for that last one, O oh Father. How, Lord, we are so grateful, Lord, in this hour, Lord, that you still have gallant men, O oh God. Gallant soldiers, Lord, that will go out and search for that last one, O oh Father. Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you would give him the strength, Lord. And us, Lord, who are here this morning, Lord, who have gathered, Lord, in your name, O oh Father, won't you come and bless us with your word, O oh Lord. We are so needy of you in this hour. Lord, we do not know where else to turn, Lord, so we turn to your word, O oh Father, which is the giver of every good gift, O oh Father. We thank you, Lord. We just pray that you would hide me behind the cross this morning, Lord. I've got nothing new that I want to bring, Lord, but simply to your cross we cling this morning. 
And we want to say thank you for your grace and for your mercy, oh Father. Be with us this morning, we ask all of it in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. And even those, Lord, who have their hands raised, Lord, you know the need that's behind that hand. Oh Father, there's, there's so many things that people are going through this morning. Lord, we, we can only look up to you this morning, oh Father. We thank you, oh Father, and we pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen. You may take your seats, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> amen. You know, that songwriter said, where would I be? You only know. I'm glad you see through the eyes of love. Amen. It's only by God's grace that we are here this morning, brothers and sisters. And as I said in my prayer, you know, there's really nothing new that we want to bring this morning. But I want to come and just encourage you with a little message called Deceptively Simple. So you might say, but brother, the vet, that sounds a little bit derogative and maybe it sounds a little bit like a paradox, but you know, something can be deceitfully simple. So much so that, you know, you can be deceit, you can be uh, the, the, deceited by it in the fact that, you know, it's, 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 it's so small and it's so simple, but this morning I, I want to show you, and maybe even, maybe it will be, uh, you know, beneficial for the young people as well. We sometimes make life so hard and we think that everything is so difficult to understand and we try and, and you know, put ourselves in a, in a position where we can say, well, you know, if we were only back in the Garden of Eden, things would have been, you know, easier. And, you know, if I could only understand a few things a little bit better and if God only gave me a certain mind, then, you know, I would have been able to do this and I would have been able to do that. And, you know, I would have certainly been able to understand the Word of God better. But brothers and sisters, it's so deceptively simple, Right? And here we come to this time that we, say, that we see that there's a lot of things happening in the world and we see there's a lot of, uh, 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 you know, the deceitful things that's happening in the world, ministers who are rising in the Pentecostal era, ministers that's rising in the message, ministers that's, uh, you know, trying to dis deceive people and, and so forth. But it's only just but something that's busy happening here on earth that happened in the Garden of Eden a long, long time ago. Because it was easy for Satan now to come to this point where he now come to Eve and just, he just changed that one word and the word of God said that thou shalt surely die and here she goes to church on a different Sunday. She goes to a different minister. She goes to, if we might call him this morning, priest or Pope Satan. <laughs> Is that all right? And he preaches another sermon and he said, thou shalt surely not die. And she says, I like this. I, you know, I like this preacher. Because the other, my husband, he said, I'm going to die. And this one says, I'm not going to die. Well, you know, it only is about time, you know, and the service is finished. And, and she had time with Satan there in the Garden of Eden. And she says, well, you know, I'm going to go and talk to him. And he, what does he do? He whispers sweet little nothings into her ear. Because it's deceitfully simple, right? Thou shalt surely not die, but thou shalt be like God is, knowing right from wrong. My, I want that. And so we see, brothers and sisters, that it come to that time that she fell. And Brother Branham says, every war, every death, every heartache, every brokenheartedness, Everything is because of that act. Everything is because of that act. And we see that how deceitfully simple it was because now Eve come to this point where she goes back to Adam and she says, surely this must be the truth. And Adam preaches the same message again that was given to him by God saying that from my loins you came and it won't be long and we will also be speaking things into existence. He says exactly. Because Brother Branham says, if Eve waited but a little bit while longer, Jesus Christ would have spoke, been spoken into existence, right? So I trust I'm speaking to message believers here this morning. Hallelujah. So Jesus Christ would have been spoken into existence as the first Christ, as the first child that's being born. But what happens is Eve thinks that she can do something about it. Just like Sarah thought by sending her hands woman in, she can do something about the promise. But the promise is going to come, brothers and sisters. And as you are seated there this morning, you might say, but I don't know whether I'm a child of God or a son of God. Amen. And now you come to this point where you say, I'm going to try and do something about it. I'm going to shout louder in church. It's not going to help you. 
I'm going to cry more. It's not going to help you. You have to trust the process. The promise of a son was given, and that promise is going to come into fulfillment. You say, brother, I still struggle with so many things. So do all of us. The younger, the younger, the elders amongst us, if I may call them that, if we will give them time this morning and invite them up, say, brother, tell us when is the struggle going to end? I see some elders shaking their head saying, never. It's never going to end, brothers and sisters, because we, on a day-to-day -day basis, we are granted this privilege that we get the word test every day. And by the end of the day, when you come, when you lay down in your bed and you, and you pray to God and you say, Lord, have I made the word test today? Amen. Then it comes to that point where you say, have I made the word test? In other words, every challenge that had come up, did I have the word test? Did I, the testing that came, did I, did I do it with the word? And it's so deceptively simple that you would come to the end of your day and say, I failed in everything, but did you really fail in everything? Or is it just so deceitfully simple that you actually made it and you didn't know it? Deceitfully simple. I want to remind you what we read in verse 2. It says, For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you a chaste virgin to Christ. Amen. What does it say? To one husband. One husband. And that is to Christ. So we see here that the bride is stipulated as the people. Do you believe you are the bride of Jesus Christ? You believe it, brothers and sisters. You've got to be honest with yourself. Let me tell you, sometimes we say, do you believe you're the bride of Jesus Christ? Yes, brother. You've got to be honest with yourself. You know, one of these days, there's going to be a shout that comes forward. And then you, it shouldn't be a thing, well, you, am I going to go? Am I going to stay? Am I going to go? Am I going to stay? No, no. You better have your garment ready that time. Your garment ought to be pressed and ready at that time. I may present you a chaste virgin to Christ. What does Brother Branham say? He says, now the second Adam, which is he himself, Christ, the fullness of the Godhead bodily, he says, the second Adam cannot fail. Yeah. Oh my. The second Eve cannot fail, brothers and sisters. She can't fail. So Satan is here coming and he tries to indoctrinate you with different things. And he tries to tell you, you're not a son of God. But guess what, Satan? You've already lost the battle. You've lost it. Because my prophet, my prophet, is it okay if I call him my prophet? I know he's yours too, but you have to proclaim that yourself. My prophet told me that the second Eve cannot fail. She cannot fail. And so you might say, but well, Brother David, it's in, my, in the power of myself this morning. It's so deceitfully simple to understand that it's not in your own power. That you could be deceived by it by thinking that you can do something about it. God is going to change your heart, sister. God is going to change your heart, brother. You know, uh, you know, sometimes as a pastor, I'm sure with, with Brother Brian as well, you know, you come, to, sometimes people invite you over. You come to this place where somebody's in the, been in the message for 30 years and the brother sits you down and says, now brother, I've got something to tell you. I still struggle with smoking. No. But it's true. Each one of us as we seated here this morning, we have challenges. Am I talking to people or are you already there? We have certain challenges, brothers and sisters, right? Now we've got two choices. We can either tell the brother, look, brother, you're not allowed back in the church. Or we can say, well, let's pray for you. Because it's a process that we are going through. It's a growth that we are going through. He said, brother, we accept you. He says, should we accept all kinds of sin? That's not what I'm saying. We shouldn't accept all kinds of sin, but we should understand that people are going through a process. 
And the process is really short because let me remind you of the man that hang next to our Lord Jesus Christ, which was a thief and a murderer. But when he stood up for Christ in his day, when he stood up for the word in his day, <laughs> he said, today, you'll be with me in paradise. Today, you'll be with me in paradise. It's deceitfully simple, brothers and sisters. I want to read you this first quote. Brother Branham says in the message, The Unwelcome Christ, he says, Some of you people only go to church once a year. Whew. Do you see that? Once a year. He says, oh my, it's Easter morning. You put on your most charming garment, your most beautiful hat, and you go down to church and you sweat set for 20 minutes, and then you come back and say, that settles it till next Easter. He says, does Jesus accept it? Oh, this is beautiful, brothers and sisters. Let me pause here. He says, does Jesus accept it? Amen. Yes, he accepts it. Any place you'll give him, he will accept it. He'll never rebuke you. He will give you, blank spot on the tape, oh yes, we have one another too that we think more important. My brother, my sister, the most important thing in your life is to entertain Jesus Christ. Do you believe that? The most important thing that you can do this morning is to entertain Jesus Christ. But here's the sad part. If you come to church once a year, you'll accept it. Isn't it beautiful? Your pastor might not accept it. The deacons might not accept it. The, this brother or that brother might not accept it, but God accepts it. But here's the question to this. Why would we do that? Why would we only want to come to church once a year when we can give him all? But here's the beautiful thing. He accepts whatever it is that you give him. So why don't you give him your all this morning? Why don't you give him your all? If he's, if he's up for acceptance, then just let him accept everything that you are. Say, Lord, I come with my faults. I come with my mistakes. I come with everything that I have. But here I am, Lord. I'm going to do my best. The most important thing in your life is to entertain Jesus Christ. So the second slide, it says, a big great man can't simplify himself. He has got to be a dignitary, see, because he ain't big enough yet. When he comes big enough, then he comes down like this, you see, can humble himself. As the old saint said out there in Chicago, that fellow went up with all the education and things, said he'd come down, wiped out, head hanging down, walking out defeated. He said if he would have went up the way he come down, he'd have come down the way he went up. Well, that's right, see. I don't know how many of you remember, but I, I can't remember the message that Brother Brandon preaches, but he preaches a message where he tells a story where he was at a convention and you know, he was seated in the, uh, uh, he was seated in the, in the audience and somebody come up and said, does anybody know where Brother Branham is, that Baptist preacher? And he said, no, I'm just going to keep quiet because he didn't have the right clothes on, you know, had, I don't know, some trousers on with some jacket. He was, he said, no, he can't go up. So he just kept quiet. But there was a colored brother sitting next to him. And it says after a while again, somebody come up, taps the mic. Uh, Branham, does anybody know where Branham is? He says he just went lower and lower in his seat. And the, the colored brother next to him says, do you know who this fella is? He says, oh, no, no, no. no. Again, Branham, anybody knows who, where Branham is? He says, brother, do you really don't know who he is? He says, now look talks about the year and the reason why the man went up the way he went down he would have went down the way he went up he says there was a man there that preached on theology and this and this and this and he had he was so learned and he went up there thinking that oh my if i can just get an, an audience and if i can just say something then my you know there's some I'm, I'm gonna teach them something but then it just fell on deaf ears you know brother brother uh, brother uh, brothers and sisters if you preach the word to people, they'll say amen. You just have to preach the word. You don't have to preach about theology and the DNA and the this and the this. Just speak the word. Because the word is the original seed. The word is the original seed. Not some man's theology or how good you can speak. The original seed. 
Not some man's theology or how good you can speak and all of those things. So how you come up, if you come up humbly, you'll go down happy. But if you come up happy, you'll go down not so happy. Because we have to stay humble, brothers and sisters. He says, humble yourself. Just be humble. Don't try to be peculiar. Just love Jesus. See, say, Lord, if there is any guile in my heart, if there's anything wrong, Father, I don't want to be like that. You take it away. I don't want to be like that. Oh, I want to be numbered as one of them in that day, Lord. And I see the day approaching. One of them, hallelujah, one of them. Amen. I didn't, I didn't hear that song say, I am so disappointed that I'm one of them. It says, I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Because we ought to be glad. Till we see that day approaching, brothers and sisters. But what is it? We come, we, we come with, such, we, we, with, with such humbleness. You know, if God can only use us when we are humble, brothers and sisters. You know, God will use you when you are humble, but when you're full of yourself and you think, my, I've, I've arrived and I can do this and I can do that and I can do this and I can do that and I know exactly what to say when and you know how to approach this and how to say that and how the pastor ought to run the church and how the deacons ought to act. And you know, I just know everything, brother. You ought to sit down with me. I can tell you a lot of things. That's not being humble. But when you can say, brothers, let's pray together. Sisters, let's just settle down. Let's just pray together. Let's just be humble in our approach. You know, I remember way back when we started the church, we had six chairs packed out. Six chairs just here in the front. Humble beginnings. I packed two right behind the six so I can feel better. But they weren't occupied. Humble beginnings. If you look at what's happening to you here, look how God has blessed you with this building and the amount of people here. You say, oh brother, you should have seen this and oh brother, you should have seen that and you should know how we worship and you should know how we praise and you should know how we pray and all those kind of things. Be humble. Be humble. And God will bless you. You know, Brother Branham, I never see him brag on his own ministry about how the dead walked and the cripple walked and the dead was raised and, you know, cancers fall off and eyes. You know, I remember that prayer in India where Brother Branham says, he comes, he says, now I challenge every one of your gods in India, standing in front of a crowd of 30,000 people. He says, I challenge you to bring all your gods and give this man back his sight. Talk about authority, brothers and sisters, Amen. He says, I challenge you in the name of Jesus Christ, bring your gods and let this man get back his sight. And he says, but my God is going to do it. And he starts praying for him. But listen to this. He starts praying for him. And in the middle of his prayer, he stops. He says, pardon me, brother. I forgot to ask you. What color eyes do you want? <laughs> Woo! What color eyes do you want, brother? Can you imagine that? You say, Lord, I would have been happy by just receiving my sight. But now you ask me, brother, what kind of eyes, what color eyes do you want? <laughs> do we serve a living God, brothers and sisters? Amen. What color eyes do you want? Oh, Lord, if I could but have the sight, I would have been happy. But now you ask me, what color eyes do I want? What is it? The humbleness of Brother Branham to come to that place. To say, my God is good enough to give this man back his sight. He never bragged on himself, but he many times, you listen to his tapes, he says many times, I would like to brag a little bit about my Jesus. I'd like to brag on Jesus. Then that other sister came and said, Brother Branham, you brag too much on your Jesus. He says, but if I found, be found guilty of just that one offense, I'll be happy. <laughs> if I'll be found... Guilty of that one offense that I've bragged too much on Jesus, I'll be happy. Oh my. She says, but I'll prove to you that he, was, he wasn't God. She says, well, how do you do that? She says, well, I'll prove it to you by your own Bible. If you go to the shortest verse of what you can ever find in your Bible, it says, and Jesus wept. She says, at the grave of Lazarus, if he was divine, he wouldn't have wept. She says, lady, he might have been a man when he wept at the Lazarus' grave. 
He says, but when he pulled his shoulders back and he says, Lazarus, come forth. He said, that was more than a man. That was God in human flesh. That's right. And why? Because he could be humble, brothers and sisters. And so it can be deceitfully simple. Right? We could see Jesus crying at the, at the grave of Lazarus, but at the same time, we can see him raise the dead. And so it can be deceitfully simple. You know, those that played with him and, and those who, who, who grew up with Jesus and, and saw him as a, as, a, as a child and say, but we played with you. We played with you. Now you talk like you're, like you're the son of God. He says, who do you think you are? You see, sometimes I get afraid because it seems like even us, we don't talk that way. You know, people should be asking us the same question. How dare you? Be so blunt in 2022 to make as if you are the son of God. But I am a son of God. But I am a son of God. Right? And your, and your, and your, and your neighbor will say, but we cut grass together just the other day. And you'll say, yes, no, we, we did cut grass together. And, and, and your school kids, uh, your, your school friends will come to you and say, but we remember you were an athlete. You were the best athlete. You speak fair Jy kon hard loop en jy kon dinge doen. Sê, ja, maar ek is een van God. I am a son of God. Brothers and sisters, if we don't make Christ ours, somebody else is going to make him. But we have to make Christ ours. I'm not going to give him back to the world. They had their chance, brothers and sisters. And they failed dismally. It can be deceitfully simple. In the next slide, he says this. He says, now, when I said great times, now I'm going to speak on something about this morning. He says, you know what man calls great? Sometimes is not great. But what God calls great, man calls foolish. And what God calls foolish, man calls great. So let's bear that in mind and weigh every word. Don't you like that? What God calls great, man calls foolish. What do you mean you go to church on a Sunday morning? You know, you could have slept late. I mean, what's wrong with you? What do you mean you praise God? What do you mean you sing Christian songs? Don't you know you could live, listen to rock and roll? Don't you know that Elvis Presley sings much greater music than what anybody else could ever sing? What do you mean? You say, but what you call great, God calls foolish. So you won't be able to understand it because what I call great, you call foolish. So maybe we just can't have fellowship. Maybe you're just an unbeliever. But there's not much I can do about it. But I and my house, we will serve the Lord. Me and my house. We're going to serve the Lord, brothers and sisters. But listen to this. So he says, so let's bear in mind and weigh every word. I like that because it, it, it reminds us to weigh every word that comes. You know, Brother Branham, as the prophet of God says, go and check me up with the word. He's the prophet of God. So how much the more should you, after this service this morning, go check Brother DeVette up with the word? Because I'm not the prophet of God. I'm just a servant. Right? But do we do that? And there was quietness in the church. We should weigh up every word of God. And then we must look at it and say, but is that really for me in this hour? Weigh it up. Amen. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. <clears throat> Second Corinthians chapter 1. <clears throat> we want to read from verse 8. He says here, for we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of the trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raises the dead, who delivered us from such a great death and doth deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Yea, also helping together by prayer for us so he's saying here from verse from verse 8 he says it's like we almost wanted to die 
we wanted to almost die. He says, but you, helping together by prayer for us, that for, you, for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. For our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the world and more abundantly to you words. For we write none other thing unto you that, than, that, than what ye read or acknowledge. And I trust you should acknowledge even to the end. As also you have acknowledged us in part that we are your rejoicing, even as ye also are ours in the day of the Lord Jesus. Acknowledged even to the end. Now, sometimes I, as Brother DeVette, I ask uh, uncomfortable questions. Is that okay with you? So, the uncomfortable question for this morning is, are you going to endure to the end? Are you going to endure to the end? Regardless, regardless of what it is that you are, have to lose, you know, as South Africans, can I say this? We are very privileged to be able to gather like this. You, as South Africans, we are very privileged to have be allowed this in our homes and in our street and in your car. When the police stop you, they don't ask you yet, do you have a Bible? And arrest you because you have a Bible. My brother-in-law, he, he gives, uh, son, uh, he gives English school lessons in China. He says he can't find a message church in China because... You can't ask the question. They will lock you up. And those who know, they don't say anything. Because, they're not, they, because you're an outsider and you come from another country, they don't know if, whether you're a spy. And so even normal Christian, even Pentecostal churches, it, everything is underground. Some people know the scriptures off by heart because they don't have Bibles. Hmm. Something to think about. But we have it. Has it just become a nightstand decoration? And every Sunday you wipe off the dust. Okay, Brother Brian is going to see, eh? Yo. Brothers and sisters, we have to endure to the end. Brother Branham says there's going to be a very small group that makes it. When we look at the Garden of Eden and what was preached there, we realize that a few years later, exactly the same is being preached by Moses. And yet when Moses preaches and he preaches that God is coming and is going to be a deliverer and everything is going to be fine and these people are going to move out. And yet, two million people were saved. Two million people were saved, but two went in. Two went in. That's why Brother Brandon preaches a whole sermon on it and he says, one in a million. Right? One in a million. You know that there's currently, according to the stats of Voice of God recordings and all, those, all the brothers that do all the stats and try and see how many, you know there's about two million believers in the world. Message believers. Two million. One in a million, two million. But then Brother Brandon comes and he says, now if God comes to your doorstep and asks you, are you that one, you better stand up and say, that's me, Lord. If there's one person in this building here this morning, well, I don't know about you, but it's me, okay? So you better have the confidence to stand up and say, but that's me, Lord. And it doesn't matter what Brother so-and-so says that it's him. And no, it's me. And then we don't have to fight about it, but let's just see one another on the other side because one of these days, it's going to be a reality. It's going to be a reality. For the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we that are alive and remain shall go and meet him in the air, brothers and sisters. Mm. But we need to endure until the end. And so it can be so deceitfully simple. Because the world tells us nowadays, well, you know, it's... Who's this Jesus? Why, why don't you just give up on him? Thou speakest like a foolish woman. 
Why don't you just curse God and die? Thou speakest like a foolish person. Did you know that you're, you're a fool? He said, brother, you can't say that from the pulpit. Well, if somebody wants to act stupid, let them act stupid. But me, I am that one in a million. I am that one. You say, brother, are we going to see you on the other side? For sure you're going to see me there. You say, but we don't like you very much. Well, you're going to see me there anyways. But we have to endure until the end. In Isaiah chapter 53 verse 1, it's on the board. It says this, Whom hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Whom have believed our report? You go out there, brothers and sisters, let me say, as a pastor, as an evangelist, I like doing evangelistical work. I like doing missionary work. I like, doing, I like talking to people about Christ. You go out there and you try and talk to people about Jesus Christ. Many of the brothers who go out and do this will testify here this morning the same. It, there's nothing. It's dead. The time has come, brothers and sisters, where you have to make a decision as a believer. It's, people are worshiping Satan's Eden. It's his kingdom. But to whom have report, who believes our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? The next slide, Brother Branham says in the message, God hiding himself in simplicity. He says, see, that's the way we want the Bible. Just the way the Bible says it. That's the way that we want it. Just like that. Don't put your own interpretation to it. It's already interpreted. Don't try and interpret it. It's already interpreted. He says, you see, now whom have believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Let me read it again now closely. Whom have believed our report? Question. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? In other words, if you have believed our report, then the arm of the Lord has been revealed. You say, but where is, where is the God of Jacob, Isaac, and, 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 of, and of Esau, and, and, and where's the God of Abraham, and where's the God of Moses? He says, if you believe our report, then the arm of the Lord has been extended to you. But you have to believe the report. Say, so, well, brother, you know, I try and do my own thing, and I, I try and, you know, I try and do this, and I try and do that, and, you know, I stay at home, and I only listen to tapes, and, you know, I don't really believe in the fivefold ministry, and I don't really do this. Then you don't believe the report. For Paul had one report, and that is that if you gather in the name of Jesus Christ, he will come into your midst. We have to be honest with ourselves, brothers and sisters. Whom have believed our report? Well, it's a question. If you have believed our report, then the arm of the Lord has been revealed. Next slide, St. Matthew 11, 25 and 26. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. You know, many times, as message believers, <laughs> We don't want to be known as babes. Say, brother, I'm not a babe. I'm an eagle, brother. Brother Branham says, I'm a ripper of the beak. What do you mean I'm a, I'm a babe? I'm not a babe. But Jesus says, has revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for it seemed godly in thy sight. Amen. So all of a sudden, all of us are babes this morning, right? Say, Lord, then let me obey, but at least let me then understand that your hand has been extended to me so that grace can be found in my life. For I have tried so many times, Lord, to do it by myself, and I have failed every time. Every time. Well, the Branham continues in the next slide. He says, catch those two scriptures. Whom have believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Even then Jesus thanked God that he had hid the mysteries of the wise and prudent, and would reveal it to the babe such it would learn, for it seemed good to God to do that. Aren't you grateful for that? It seemed good to God that he would rather use babes that want to learn than those great esteemed men. Brother Brandon says, what are you going to do with your PhD, LLD, MMD, CHC, water, 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 water? What are you going to do with it? He says it just takes you further and further away from God. Because now you start reasoning what you've learned in school. You start reasoning what you've learned in university. 
Let me say, brothers and sisters, it's so deceitfully simple. Oh my, have you got your Bibles with you? I want to turn to the most uh, well-known scripture in the message, Revelation 10, 7. Just quickly turn there. This is how deceitfully simple it is. In Revelation 10, 7, the scripture says, But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he had declared to his servants the prophet. Now, even with this microphone and the, and the, and the, and the, and the, and the nice, you know, it sounds so good, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel. And you would think, my Glory to God, that's deep. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, you say, my I, I, brother, I don't know if I'm going to understand, ever understand that. But then in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he sounded, it was just about this high. Deceitfully simple, right? He comes, and, he, and he's about this high, and he stands behind the pulpit, and he says, Good evening, friends. <laughs> Amen. Deceitfully simple. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound. Good evening, friends. Oh, my. Good evening, friends. You know, I was hunting and I was doing this. and I, People are, why does he talk about hunting and fishing and all of that and all of that? But to the bride of Jesus Christ, we realized the strain that he was under and that he had to rest. He had to rest. You know, Brother Branham talks about a place called Yellowknife. He only talks about it once. Yellowknife. You mark it down in your book and you go and search for it. He says, that's where God goes to rest of all the trouble that we put him in. But isn't it funny that Brother Branham goes and meets him there every time. So when Brother Branham rests, God rests. <laughs> but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he has declared unto his servants the prophet. But it seemed good for God to reveal it to babes such as us that would learn. You say, Lord, why have you chosen me? I challenge every one of you by raising your hand. How many of you have asked God the question, why me, Lord? Have you, have you asked God that question? Why have you chosen me to understand the mysteries through the prophet? Why me? And your neighbor is just carrying on and they're just playing, you know, they're just they worshiping, uh, if I can call it Baal, and they, you know, they, the mammon, and, you know, they're just carrying on with their partying and everything is just going on very well and everything. And you still stand there and you say, Lord, I can't sleep because of the music that's carrying on next door. But why, Lord, why have you chosen me to be a recipient of this word? To also hear, good evening, friends. <laughs> oh, my. He continues in that same message. He says, man is always giving God praise for what he did do and always looking forward to what he will do and ignoring what he is doing, see? Another question. What is God doing in your life now? In other words, if we could start here and by, if the deacons would allow us the entire day this morning, we could give each one of you a, the mic and say, come and tell us what is God doing in your life now? We know what he did yesterday. Well, that, you know, we know that what he did yesterday. We know what he's going to do in the future, but what is God doing in your life now? Just come up here and give your testimony on what God is doing in your life now. And let me tell you, brothers and sisters, if you stand here to this morning with a back full tanner, dan is al groot probleem. Want God is bezig om vanmorgen iets in jou leven vir jou te doen. Daar moet iets wees wat jy hiervoor kan staan en vir hom sê, Heere, ek prijs jou naam, dankie vir alles wat jy vir my doen. Daar moet iets wees. Het is onmoendlik dat jy hier kan staan vanmorgen en vir my sê, daar is niks wat die Heere vir jou gedoen het nie. Het is onmoendlik. It's impossible. Because it's so deceitfully simple that it would deceive the very elect if it was possible. But let's not ignore what God is doing in your life this morning. We look for the big things, brother. But God is not in the big things. 
He's in the big things. Yes, of course he is. But he's in the small things. And small things become bigger and bigger and bigger. Let him trust you with the little things so that he can trust you with the big things. The problem is we want God to trust us with the big things. But are we there yet? He says that's the way they miss it. They look back and see what a great thing he had done, but they fail to see what a simple thing he used to do it with. He uses simple things to do great things with. And then they look forward and see great things coming that's going to happen. And nine out of ten times, it's already happening right around them. Oh, Lord, I'm, I'm still going to go into a rapture. No, God is working on the rapture right now. Oh, I'm going to receive my body change, but he's already changing your body. Little by little, day by day. Oh, little by little in everywhere, Jesus. He's changing me day by day. You say, brothers and sisters, you can come up here, you can give your testimony, you can be as humble as you want to be. You say, brothers and sisters, I used to, I used to struggle with those things in my young, younger days, but praise be to God, He delivered me of them. He's changing me day by day. It's a process. And in one of these days, you're going to be changed so much that he has no other choice but to change you into a glorified body. A theophany. Have you heard from your theophany? Oh, my. And it's so simple that they don't know it, see. The next one, the next slide, brother, he says, that's why... I'm not against brethren who are in denominations, but I'm against the system of denominations because it tries to magnify itself. Oh, if you're not in this church, then you won't make it. If you're not with the Pentecostals, then you won't make it. If you're not with the Catholics, you won't make it. Brother Branham says, if we are going to be saved by the Catholic church, then which one? Because they all differ, right? So I want to ask you the same question here this morning, brothers and sisters. If we are going to be saved by a message church, then which one? Do you have to be at the Spoken Word Tabernacle? Do you have to be at Eagle Ministry Tabernacle? Do you have to be at that brother or that brother? You don't have to be anywhere. Brother Adam says you support your local ministry. That's what you're doing this morning, right? But we are the bride of Jesus Christ. That's who we are. We are the bride. Into one body are ye baptized. That's scripture, right? Is that scripture, brothers and sisters? Into one body are you baptized? He didn't say you are baptized into Eagle Ministry Tabernacle. Or you are baptized into the spoken word tabernacle. Into one body are you baptized. So then when we stand there in that great morning, brothers and sisters, when we hear the trump of God sounding, then I can come to you, sisters, or to you, brothers, and we hook our arms and say, come, brother, let's go. The time has come. We say, oh, brother, are you... Are you at the Word Tabernacle? I can't talk with you, you know. Because, no, no, no. Are you with Eagle Ministry Tabernacle? Let me just make sure. Have you got a card with you? Brother, where's your stamp of approval? No. It's an individual affair. God deals with you as an individual. He deals with Israel as a nation. But we Gentiles... We were idol worshippers just the other day, man. Did you know that? The prophet says that. We were idol worshippers. Then God, by His grace, turned His eyes from the Jews back to the Gentiles. <laughs> to do what? To preach to you this morning. To say, I am the Lord thy God that heals all thy diseases. I'm the one that took Israel out of Egypt. I'm the one that spoke through Brother Branham. I'm the one that wants to speak to you this morning. I'm the Lord thy God. Oh my, I've never think it was God's will to test the minister by physitry, but to test him by the word. You have to have the word test. Psychiatry, what, what is that word? Psychiatry, right? See, it would be God's way of testing this man he sent out to have the word. Preach the word. Now today we preach philosophy, we preach creed and denominationalism and so many things and leaving off the word, but they sat, but they say it can't be understood. It can be understood. 
Oh, brothers and sisters, if I say now, if I leave the pulpit this morning, let me say this to you. The prophet says, they think that it cannot be understood. It can be understood. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. It can be understood. All we have to do, oh my. We need to take the time and pull out the book and read it. It has to become part of you. And you have to underline it and you have to listen to it and you have to make it your life. If you don't make it your life, then don't, you know, don't, 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 don't waste time, brothers and sisters. Right? This isn't a game, brother. Branham says this, we're not on a picnic. He says we're on a battlefield, man. We're on a battlefield. Right? And the elders amongst us will say to you, brother, do you see the scar? He says, there's at one time that I didn't listen to God. He said, brother, but I can't see a scar. He says, yes, you can't see it. But I know it's there. Battlefield. It's not a picnic, brother, is it? It's a battlefield. If it was a picnic, it would have been easy. You know, God is love. God is peace. But he requires a life from you, brother. <laughs> Young people, let me say this to you. He requires a life of you. And I want to I wanna challenge the young people of our generation and say, you stand for God. Because there is a time coming that's going to be very, very difficult for you. Where you're going to have to choose between right and wrong. And if, you're, if you don't make a stand, young people, let me say to you this morning. If you don't make a stand, the devil is going to trip you over. You better know where you stand this morning. He says, so we preach for office. Now we're asking him to do it. So he says it can be understood. He promised to do it. And now we're asking him to do it. So we see that God hiding himself in simplicity and revealing himself in the same is the message that's preached just before the breaking of the first seal. Amen. So we see it's God hiding himself in simplicity, the breach between the seven seals and the seven church ages, and the first seal. What is it? Why did Brother Branham preach that service? God hiding himself in simplicity because he now knows that we're going now over into these seals. And he doesn't want you to overthink that God isn't in the simple things. So when you read the first seal, don't try and think of it like a doctor. Just think of God in simplicity. Because it's so simple. It's deceitfully simple. It's so deceitfully simple that he blesses us. In many ways. Let's turn to Romans 12, chapter 5. <clears throat> you love the Lord this morning, brothers and sisters. I know you do. <clears throat> I'm not used to preaching with a mic. I... So it takes me longer to find my scriptures. Oh my. Can somebody read Romans 12, verse 5 for us, please? Can a brother read it for us? Which side? Sorry, I, I didn't seem to find it. Can somebody just read it out loud? Romans chapter 12, verse 5. Amen. Did you hear that? Many members are one member in Christ. And every one member, one of another. You say, but I... I'm so much of an individual, I like to be alone in my room and be crept away, but you, one, you, you are part of the other one. <laughs> Deceitfully simple, right? I, I thought I was all on my own. You're not on your own. There's somebody that's connected to you and you connected to the next one and you connected to the next one and connected to the next one and connected to the next one. And now we form a global body. You so say, how am I connected to the brothers and sisters in America? Just like that. How do we come in unity? Just like that. 
So we being many are one body in Christ. Deceitfully simple, brothers and sisters. You say, brother, how does God really deal with us? Let me show you. Say in Matthew chapter 24. Turn with me there this morning quickly. Say in Matthew chapter 24. So can God really deal with me in such a miraculous way that it really says that I'm going to extend my arm if you believe my report. Listen to how beautiful this is. St. Matthew chapter 13. Oh, sorry, I said 24, uh, 13. St. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 13. And we're going to read from verse 24. Amen. If you have it in your Bible, say amen. It says, another parable put ye forth unto, this, unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which soweth good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went, in, went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. Deceitfully simple, right? So God goes and he tears and he, and he sows seed, but there's someone behind him. Brother Branham says in many places, he says it was that man that was clothed in dark clothing. So God sows seed, here's that man. He's also sowing seed. But he's got a grin on his face. <laughs> but listen to how beautiful this is. So God says in verse 24, another parable. Can you say that? Parable. So God speaks to them in parables, lest they understood. Right? Lest they understood, brothers and sisters. But now go to verse 34. He says, and all these things, things spake Jesus unto the multitudes in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them. In other words, every time he addressed the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the, and the priests and all of those things, he never spoke to them without speaking to them in a parable. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will enter, I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. So we see now Jesus goes out, he preaches his message, but he preaches it in parables. He said, but how does, how, how am I as a believer going to understand that then, brother David, if God speaks to me in parables? Hold on. Listen how beautiful this is. Just go to the very next verse. Verse 36, then Jesus sent the multitudes away and went into the house. And his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the fields. He answered and said unto him, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. <laughs> So when he spoke to them, he just said a sower went out to sow. He didn't tell them who it was. And now he starts revealing inside the house with only the 12 that's there. So out there in the world, they preach Pentecost. Oh, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. But brothers and sisters, if you give him the opportunity to come into your house, he says, now that sower is the son of man. The field is the world, the good seeds are the children of his kingdoms, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. Now when he's alone with the twelve, he reveals the mystery. He reveals the mystery. He says, oh, I can't tell them that. But when we are alone in the house, let me tell you now what's going on. So let me say this, brothers and sisters. When Brother Branham is out there preaching... Alaska, Tucson, Texas, all these places. He's just preaching to the multitude. He says you can cast out the net. And when you pull it in, he says there's all kinds of fishes in there. There's crabs, there's tuna, there's this, there's that. I don't know fish, by the way. But when you pull it out, there's all kinds of fish, right? But the good ones are also in there, brothers and sisters. Amen. But now God comes to him, he says to him, Store up the food in Jeffersonville. 
Am I speaking to message believers here this morning? He says, store up the food in Jeffersonville. He says, for there's going to come a time where the bride of Jesus Christ is going to need it. So now he doesn't come and just talks to us about, oh, you know, all these things. No, 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 no. He doesn't do that, brothers and sisters. Let me show you what he does. He preaches in Jeffersonville the seven seals, the revelation of who Jesus Christ really is. Because he now isn't outside speaking to everyone. He knows that those that are in Jeffersonville are the 12 disciples that he preached to in the house. They will say amen to the real word of God because they understand it now. He doesn't go that far. He preaches also the seven church ages in Jeffersonville. Store up the food in Jeffersonville. Don't try and explain it to those people out there. They're not going to understand it. But store it up in Jeffersonville. You go, Brother George Smith was here just the other day, right? Brother Brian was good enough for me to have him on the Friday. So he was speaking about Jeffersonville and all those things. He says, brother, the amount of believers that are there are so small. You see, it wasn't, be, it wasn't about Jeffersonville. He said, well, you know, Bible, uh, Branham Tabernacle is there. The prophet's grave is there and all those things. And it's beautiful and so forth. But if you have to find believers there, you wouldn't find much. But when you come to South Africa. <laughs> I said, when you come to South Africa. Right? It wasn't for him. It wasn't for that age. It wasn't for those people, brothers and sisters. But years down the 57 years down the line, I mean, you are seated here this morning and you say, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Speak to me, my Lord. Speak to me. I'm in the house this morning. Speak to me the beautiful things that I want to hear. And the salutation of thy lips is beautiful. Why? He revealed to them the most inner parts of what he wanted them to understand about his word. Not outside, inside. Brother Branham comes many times, he says that inner closet prayer is the most important prayer that you will ever experience in your life. Not out here in the church. Let's not be like those that want to scream and shout. And Jesus says, well, you know, they're just hypocrites. They just, you know, they just want to let men hear their voices. But when you're in that inner closet, brothers and sisters, there it gets serious. Right? That's when God comes down and he says, now I'm going to deal with you. That fourth friend of Job who came to him. The scripture says his very name was Elohim. Very close to Elohim, Right? But the random says, that was God himself. So when he had come down, he says, go and gird up yourself. When you come back, let us discuss the word like two men. God challenging Job about his faith. Hmm. What will we do when we have that Job experience? I think it will be wonderful. Just to sit with Jesus. Let me talk a little while with him. That song says, I'd like to talk it over and thank him for his wonderful grace. I would like to talk it over and thank him for his wonderful grace. You say, Brother David, where are we going to find you that day when we're on that side, at the feet of Jesus? There's nowhere else I want to be, brothers and sisters. For this very message has been our life. Everything that we have done was because of this message. Everything that we have done is because of Christ. And I want to be a true custodian of the message of the hour. I don't want to live it halfway, but I want to live it full out. I don't want to be one foot in the world and one foot in the message. I want to live it full out. So that God can come to me and say... Then Jesus went into the house and he spoke to them without parables. This is really what I want my message to be this morning, brothers and sisters. It can be so deceitfully simple. But you know, many times the brothers come up, they close in prayer, they say, Lord, 
may you be the after speaker. The brother that says that really means it in his heart. Because here, brothers and sisters, we are a, a, a multitude and a group of people, but God deals with you in the afterthought. So what is it that Brother David was really saying? What is it what the service was really about? Now you start thinking about it. It's the afterthought of it all. Brother Branham continues and he says this. He says, or people, they missed it. Just as they miss it today. Same thing, they do the same thing. For the reason they missed it, for they were too smart to believe it. Let's not be too smart to believe the word of God, brothers and sisters. He says, now the message was so simple that the smart was too smart to believe the simplicity of the message. Oh my God made it so simple in truth that the smart and the intellectual missed it. Seeing it because it was so simple. Well, that's what makes the greatness of God so great because being the greatest, he can make himself simple. Imagine you can be so simple that you can be great. The greatness of God is simple this morning. In the next slide, he says, men today is showing that they are not of God. They are great and trying to get greater and express themselves greater. And big bishop and doctor, holy pope, everything makes themselves something that they're really not. They're really not that. You know, brothers and sisters, I say many times to the church back home, I say, don't put on my title pastor, pastor, uh, the reverend, or, or, or I'm just, I'm your brother. I'm just your brother right? Just, I'm your brother. If Brother Branham comes up, he didn't say, no, I'm Reverend William Marion Branham and you have to listen to me. No, he says, I'm your brother. Good evening, friends. Now remember, I'm just your brother. Not big bishop, doctor, holy pope, everything makes themselves something they are not. And God, being so great, brings himself down simple. Simplicity is greatness. Amen? Simplicity is greatness. Don't try, brothers and sisters, too hard. Don't try to serve God. Let me say this to you. Don't try and serve Him. Just serve Him. Can you do that? Don't try and serve Him. Just serve Him. It's really not hard, brothers and sisters. He says, on that basis of Jesus Christ's word, He said, He that humbles himself shall be exalted. But he that exalts himself shall be a base and be brought down. So then actually up is down and down is up. Brothers and sisters, let me say this to you. The message of the hour is not, it's not complicated. Do you believe that this morning? It's just God being gracious enough to look for a bride for his son. And if it's you this morning, I want you to stand to your feet this morning. He, he says it's so deceitfully simple that the world is going to lose it. The world is going to miss it. They're going to look at everything else except to the word. They're going to preach man's fables. They're going to listen to preachers with itching ears, listening to what the congregation has to say, and they not preach what God has laid on their heart. Having itching ears fables oh last night i went into my kitchen and i did this and i did we don't want to know anything about that just give us the word the word suffices us it sustains the very life the very being that's inside of me it sustains me brothers and sisters and i hope it sustains you but remember this it's deceitfully simple so much so that brother Branham comes to the point where he says i now no longer call you church I call you bride it's not in our own ability and maybe that's the part where it can be so deceitfully simple is that we think it's in our ability to praise God it's in our ability to sing better and sing louder and worship God better and pray more it's not in your ability brother but let me tell you this one thing this morning and as we change the course of the service, I want to I I ask you, brothers and sisters, just to bow your heads as you are standing there this morning. I just want to ask you to look really down to where God is dealing with you as an individual this morning and say, Lord, I'm going to stop trying to do things and just let it go. Just let it go, brothers and sisters. Because if it's not in your power to do it, you can say, Lord, 
at least I'm a believer this morning. And I, I just want to stop trying, Lord. I actually want to start doing. It's not so much in the trying, but it's in the doing, brothers and sisters, where you've come to this place and you say, Lord, it's so deceitfully simple that I've, I, I thought it was too hard for me to understand it, but now I know and understand that it's but in your own time, in your own revelation. Revelation comes in due season. Brother Branham says, don't never say, well, I got this and I got that. He says, you ain't got nothing. He says, just remember, if you've got the grace of God, just be thankful for it and be humble for it. Just keep humbling yourself. Let's just be humble and look towards Calvary this morning. And you, as you are standing there this morning, you say, Lord, why did you choose me? Why did you do it, Lord? Why, why did I receive this grace in this hour in 2022 to be able to say, thank you, Lord? Don't you just want to raise your hand and just thank him this morning? It's so simple, brothers and sisters. You might say, Brother David, it's so simple just to raise my hand to say thank you to him. But I just want to do it because it's not about if whether Brother David sees it, it's whether God sees it. And it can be so deceitfully simple, but a raised hand can change your life this morning. A raised hand can heal you this morning. A raised hand can change the very thing that you're struggling with this morning. A raised hand can, for that couple that's struggling, amen, with, their, with, their, with, with whatever it is that they are going through, amen, maybe it's fights and it's almost on a divorce case, whatever it is, brothers and sisters, a raised hand can change your life this morning. But here's the beautiful part. Remember, Brother Branham says that we all connected one to the other. And so my sister, even if you don't have strength this morning to raise your own hand, the sister that's sitting next to you, she's raising her hand. And the brother that's sitting on the other side, he's raising his hand. So it doesn't matter if you've got the strength this morning. We're doing it as a body of Jesus Christ. And when it comes at its darkest hour, Brother Branham says that little boy, when his mom came into that room and saw him sitting in the corner, she said, son, what's wrong? He says, mommy, I need Jesus with skin on. Sometimes we ought to be just Jesus with skin on for our brother. Sometimes we ought to just be Jesus with skin on for our sister. But what's the problem? We don't have time. We don't have this. We don't have that. But let's unite this morning, brothers and sisters, in prayer and in thanksgiving and say, Lord, it's so deceitfully simple that we've missed it. But this morning, we just want to reach out our hands and touching Jesus is all that really matters. Then your life will never be the same again. Can we sing that this morning? Touching Jesus is all that really matters.